Hello students, in this video we will learn how to find out constant of motion using Lagrangian. Okay? If a particle is moving, it is undergoing some type of motion and we want to find out the constant of motion. Then how can we find out this constant of motion with the help of Lagrangian? So, a Lagrangian, this will be a function of generalized coordinates, QIs. It will be a function of generalized velocities, QI dot, and it may be a function of time. So, if this Lagrangian is given, first what we are going to do, first we are going to check the cyclic coordinate. So, first method is to find out constant of, mass, uh, constant of motion, first we will find out cyclic coordinate. We will look for cyclic coordinate. Cyclic coordinates. Now question is, what are cyclic coordinates? Cyclic coordinates. So cyclic coordinates are those coordinates which, which do not appear explicitly in the Lagrangian. Which do not appear explicitly in the Lagrangian. So suppose QK is the cyclic coordinate, I am saying that QK is the cyclic coordinate. Then this del L by del QK del L by del QK will be 0, will, will be 0. Now if you substitute this in Lagrange's equation of motion corresponding to generalized coordinate QK, what we will find out, we will find out d by dt of del L by del QK dot QK dot minus del L by del QK, QK. This is Lagrange's equation of motion. What is this? This is Lagrange's equation of motion. So if QK is the cyclic coordinate, then this del L by del QK, this will be 0. And time derivative of this quantity is 0. It means this quantity del L by del QK dot is 0. Is constant, sorry. Is constant. So basically this quantity is going to act as a constant of motion. Throughout the motion, this quantity will remain conserved or you can say this will be a constant of motion. What is this quantity representing? This is representing PK, generalized momentum corresponding to QK generalized coordinate. Okay? So this quantity, so first method, first you are what you are going to do, you will look at the Lagrangian. You will try to find out either there is cyclic coordinate or not. If cyclic coordinate will be there, then corresponding generalized momentum, generalized momentum corresponding to cyclic coordinate will act as a constant of motion. This is first thing you are going to do. Suppose second thing may be that suppose there are no cyclic coordinate. So second case, if no cyclic coordinate is, if no cyclic coordinate no cyclic coordinate. You didn't find out any coordinate as cyclic coordinate. Okay? If there is no cyclic coordinate, nahi hai, then what you are going to do? Then you are left with only one option. You are left with only one option. Write down Lagrange's equation of motion. In this case, you will write Lagrange's equation of motion for all the generalized coordinates are involved. Suppose x, y, and z, they, these three generalized coordinates are involved, then write Lagrange's equation of motion for all the three coordinates. So first write down this d by dt of del L by del of qy minus, and this is dot, del L upon del qy and equal to 0. Suppose i is 1, 2, 3. For example, like this, then you will have three equations here. You will have three equations. Now, with the help of algebraic manipulation of these three equations, you can always find out the quantity that will remain conserved throughout the motion. I can give you a very good example. This example, this question was asked recently in NET examination, NET December 2023 examination. Here Lagrangian is given. Okay? So 
I am now I am going to discuss this question, this method on the basis of this question we are going to discuss now. So here in this question, Lagrangian is given. Here, first I am writing Lagrangian here. So in this question, Lagrangian is given here. So here, first Lagrangian is this, Lagrangian is 1 by 2 m x dot square plus y dot z dot plus z dot square minus alpha times 2x plus 3y plus z. So what you are going to do first, first you will search for cyclic coordinate but x is here, y is here, z is here so there are no cyclic coordinate. Now what you are going to do, you are going to write 3 Lagrange's equation of motion corresponding to x, corresponding to y, corresponding to z. So now you are going to write three Lagrange's equation of motion. So first, I am starting with first. What will be this equation? d by dt, d by dt, del l by del x dot, x dot minus del l by del x. And this will be equal to 0. So what you are going to get from here? Look here. Del L by del X dot. This is X dot square. So this will be 2 times X dot. So 2 will cancel out. This will be MX dot. Substitute here MX dot. So it will become MX double dot. MX double dot. Minus. Minus. This will be. Del L by del X. X is here. So this will be minus 2 alpha. So this will be minus 2 alpha and this is equal to 0. So what I get from here, I get mx double dot equal to minus 2 times alpha. So I get one of the equation like this. I can use this equation to find out constant of motion. Now write Lagrange's equation of motion for y corresponding to another generalized coordinate y. So this will be d by dt. This will be del L upon del Y dot minus del L upon del Y and this will be equal to 0. So what you are going to get? Now look at Y dot. Y dot is here. Here you are having Y dot. So what will you get? So when you will take the partial derivative with respect to Y dot, you will have 1 by 2. What you are going to have? 1 by 2 M z dot. You will get 1 by 2 m z dot and when you will again take time derivative then it will become 1 by 2 m z double dot. You are going to get this minus minus and this del l by del y y is here. So this will be minus 3 alpha. This will be minus 3 alpha and this will be 0. So from here see here what I will get? I will get m y double dot m z double dot I will get m z double dot and this will be equal to minus okay, this will be minus and 6 times alpha this will be m z double dot this is m z double dot so here I find out m x double dot I find out m z double dot now go for the z now write Lagrangian equation of motion corresponding to z. So this will be d by dt, d by dt, del l by del z dot and minus del l by del z equal to 0. You will get this. Now look here for z dot, z dot is here, z dot is here. So what will you get? If you take partial derivative with respect to this term, what you will get? You will get 1 by 2 m y dot. And when you take the second, when you take the time derivative, it will become 1 by 2 m y double dot. Second, you will get from here, this will be 2 z dot, 2 will cancel out. So this will be m z dot time derivative. So this will be m z double dot. And z is here, so you will get here this is minus minus here and what will be the derivative with respect to z this will be minus alpha so this will be minus alpha and this will be equal to 0 
So write here 1 by 2 m y double dot. In place of m double dot, write minus 6 alpha. Minus 6 alpha. This will be plus alpha. This will be 0. So this is minus 5 alpha. Take it on the right side. It will be 5 alpha. So 2 times. So m y double dot. It will be how much? m y double dot. It will be equal to 10 alpha. This is going to be 10 alpha. So you can use these three equations to check out of the four options which will be a conserved, which will be a conserved momentum. I start with a, okay, one of these options will be correct. So I start with this a. So if this is a constant of motion, then its time derivative will be zero. He is saying that we have to check that which of these four is a conserved momentum. So if they are conserved quantity means they will remain same. They will remain constant throughout the motion. So if I if I take their time derivative that should come out to be zero. So I will find out the options for which time derivative is equal to zero. That will be our answer and that momentum will be the generalized momentum. So I will start with a I will start with a so this will be d by dt d by dt of this generalized momentum. So this will be m, m, this will be 2x dot plus z dot. So it will be how much? This will be, and this will be 2 times m, 2 times m x double dot plus this will be m z double dot, m z double dot. Substitute the value of m x double dot. How much? This is minus 2 alpha. So this will become minus 4 alpha and mz double dot is here this is minus 6 alpha so this is minus 6 alpha this is minus 6 alpha so this is equal to minus 10 alpha which is not equal to 0 so this is not my answer this is not a conserved quantity if this will be a conserved quantity then time derivative of this quantity should be 0 now go for the B option. If you look at B option and I take the time derivative of this option B, D by DT and what is this? This is M 2 times X dot plus Y dot plus Z dot and what this derivative will give me? This will be 2 times MX double dot plus MY double dot plus M z double dot. I will get this. Now substitute the values of mx double dot. This is minus 2 alpha. So this will become minus 4 alpha. my double dot is plus 10 alpha. Plus 10 alpha. And mz double dot is minus 6 alpha. Minus 6 alpha. Minus 6 alpha. So what it is equal? It is equal to 0. Means time derivative of this is constant is constant it means this 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 quantity this expression will act as a constant of motion throughout the motion this will act as a constant quantity conserved quantity throughout the motion of the particle so answer of this question is b b you can also check for option c and d in the similar fashion and you will find out non zero values you will find out non zero values so answer of this question is B, B. Okay. So basically here, here when you are trying to find out constant of motion, you are going to use two methods. First, you will go for cyclic coordinate. If cyclic coordinates are there, if cyclic coordinates are there, then corresponding generalized momentum will be a constant quantity, will be a conserved quantity throughout the motion. Otherwise, you are going to follow this approach. Find out the generalized coordinate, write Lagrange's equation of motion for each generalized coordinate and whatever equations you are going to find out by the algebraic manipulation of those, you can, you can find out the quantity that remains conserved throughout the motion.